few weeks ago, my wife and I almost purchased a block of land. This is it. You're looking at it. It was advertised for $175,000, which for a 506 square meter plot of land is relatively cheap compared to other land being sold in the city. We arranged with the agent to go see it. It was advertised as being 12 meters across and 42 meters long, which at first we thought was a bit narrow to build on, but we could see that they were building a house on a similar size block next door, so we didn't think too much of it. The agent told us that the owners had already done soil tests and had prepared some house plans that would fit on the block, and that they'd all be included in the price. We thought it was a pretty good deal, but we investigated further. We went home and looked up the different soil types. H1 soil types are apparently highly reactive clay sites, which can experience high ground movement from moisture changes. It didn't sound very good to us, so we contacted the builder. They basically said that it's not such a big deal and that many houses are built on that sort of soil. We also started questioning why the owners went so far as to get the soil tested and create house plans, but in the end decided to sell the land. According to the ad, the owners had made other plans. I guess that's code for they couldn't get finance, or the cost of preparing the land was far too high. Either way, I started to have my doubts. We also noticed that the neighbouring block was sold back in February this year for $167,500, so obviously we thought we could offer a lower price than the $175,000 they were asking. But after investigating a bit further, we could see that there was a significant slope on the land. Not only was it sloping downward from the road, it was also sloping across the block. I could only assume that it was going to cost a lot of extra money to flatten the block to prepare it for the concrete slab. After speaking with a friend of ours who works in the industry, he also mentioned a few potential problems when it comes to sloping blocks. First of all, it's our duty to make sure that stormwater is conveyed to the street. So for this block of land, we can't just allow water from our roof to flow into the neighbour's yard behind. Well, not without causing a potential legal dispute. This seems to be backed up on the Queensland Government's Development Code, which talks about stormwater mitigation. Basically, roof water and surface water must not cause a health risk to the occupants of a building or damage to adjoining land or buildings. The local council also lists the three legal points of discharge. I'm not going to go into that here, but basically it costs more money to set up drainage. After showing my friend these photos, he also said that we'll have to fork out more money to build a retaining wall here on the fence line. The fact that we have to move soil from the other side of the block to here also means that the retaining wall will probably be bigger than we expect. Basically, this just means that we'll have to spend more money. Also, this existing retaining wall, we can't just go digging around willy-nilly. Our friend told us that retaining walls have something called a zone of influence. Basically, to avoid adversely affecting the structural integrity of the retaining wall, you can't dig within its zone of influence. If you do, the neighbouring house could come crashing down, I suppose. This zone of influence obviously encroaches on our land, giving us less space to build on, on an already narrow block. According to the Queensland Development Code, there's rules when it comes to where you can build on your land. Basically, you have to build 6 metres from all road boundaries, 1.5 metres from all side and rear boundaries, and a maximum of 50% of the site can be covered in roofed area. Obviously, what's going on in Logan and Redland in the south of Brisbane is just ridiculous, houses being built pretty much right next to each other. Luckily, when it comes to narrow blocks like this one, they do allow a bit of leeway when it comes to boundary clearances. For this block, which has a 12 metre frontage, you can build 0.975 metres from the boundary for a one-storey house, instead of the usual 1.5 metres. But obviously, this still doesn't allow you to go around digging within the existing existing retaining wall zone of influence. And just one more thing that our friend pointed out, he told us about government land values. Every couple of years or whatever, the government recalculate land values which are used by local councils to determine council rates. Just as a note, although the land we were looking at was being advertised as 3 Bruntnell Street, you may have noticed that the land next door was also sold as 3 Bruntnell Street. I assume this was because the land was subdivided at some point. Looking at the government maps, our land is officially classified as 1E and not 3. 
Looking up 1 E Bruntnell Street on the Queensland Government's land valuation website, we can see that the official land valuation is $120,000. The land was being advertised for $175,000. Quite a significant difference. So my friend said that with all the issues with this land, with the sloping surfaces, the retaining walls, the soil type, the stormwater mitigation, the low government valuation, and the fact that it's been on the market for more than six months, he recommended that we offer only $140,000 for it. Based on our finances at the time, we took the middle ground and offered $160,000. With that offer, we listed all our reasons and sent it to the agent. The owner got back to us quickly and basically told us to f off. On top of that, literally the next day, the land was taken off the market. I guess we offended him. Anyway, that was my little story about trying to buy land. It didn't work out very well, but at least I learned a lot.